Welcome back everyone to Mirrors, the world of mice, crickets, shrimp, and bees. If you are new here, I recommend you watch the full series here in the top right corner and subscribe so we can beat the O4 den. Mirrors, the world of mice, is a seed world. A seed world is an alien world seeded with Earth life by another intelligent life form. In the last episode, we covered the early ice age, but now we jump 10 million years into the future. This episode will cover the first few biomes of the late ice age. This new age is even colder than the previous. The ice caps have extended, enveloping Scalana and the entire northern hemisphere. This video will cover the two poles as well as Fablu and the ocean, leaving the mainland for part two. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In the freezing north, a new tree has evolved from the woodstocks, the wood pines. These trees are a staple of the ecosystem. When an apex predator as powerful as the Snow King has such a strong hold on its territory, it barely evolves. The Titan Hunter is simply a larger, more extreme Snow King. They have very, very strong jaws, allowing them to rip off the limbs of adult titans. This giant carnivore is 8 feet tall, 10 feet long, and weighs 1,700 pounds. The massive Titan Hunter has evolved to hunt the larger beaked titan. This 18 foot long, 2,500 pound beast has evolved their horn crest to cover their entire upper face, covering the teeth and becoming a beak. This beak allows them to eat the pines high up in the wood pine trees. They also have tusks that formed out of their crests that they use to defend against predators such as the Titan Hunter. Defending against predators is vital for any animal. The axe head has evolved its crest into an axe on its head, hence the name. This helps fend off attackers as well as get thick sap from the wood pines, supplementing their diet of low vegetation. These quick creatures are 5 feet long and about 150 pounds. An attack from an axe head could leave a small predator dead if the axe hits the skull. The thin mictus has become more robust, longer, and more adapted to hunting. This hunter mictus has evolved to hunt both axe heads and its smaller cousins. They have strong jaws to kill with one bite and large claws to dig out burrows. These four and a half feet long, 90 pound creatures are a common sight all over the entire northern tundras. The Mictus's intelligence was not lost in the Watchtower Mictus, as the males have turned their mating display into dens made of dirt, dung, and snow. This den is where they raise their pups and hunt for inframus. These creatures are three feet tall and they use their large clawed hands to dig these massive burrows. They weigh 12 pounds, their light weight allowing them to stand on their large burrows made of snow and not fall in, and survey the area. The Watchtower Nictus has evolved sentinel behavior to see predators and evacuate. Two groups of creatures meet in the dark tundra night. One is adorned with skulls. But not all skulls are from the same creature, while the wearers appear to be the same between both groups. They were actually the same species, one a bachelor group of males and the other a pride of females. They breed, and the females collect the skulls of corpses they scavenge, leaving them in their burrows. Months later, the pups are born a white and yellowish color to blend in with the skulls in their den, and they eat their mother's body for nutrients. Unlike their ancestors, they don't eat each other. The male pups grow into their skulls, and in the den, only the king remains, because the pack of bone mimics leave the den to scavenge and start the process all over again. The bone mimic is a very unique creature, as they grow into the skulls of other creatures. This means the larger the skull, the larger the individual. The male bone mimics have three forms. The most common is the gnome. They have medium-sized skulls, such as a female mimic or an axe head. They range from 4 to 6 feet long and 120 to 170 pounds. 
Then there are the peasants. They have taken small skulls, like the two Mictus species. They are three to four feet long and 60 to 90 pounds. The last is the Bone Mimic King. They act as the guardians of the pack. When there is a threat, the Bone Mimics will howl to alert the king, who leaves the den to help defend the pack from predators or danger. They are fed by the smaller Mimics, allowing them to become large. The kings have large skulls, like a Titan Hunter or a Beaked Titan. These kings are around 11 to 14 feet long and almost half a ton. Since the Bone Mimics no longer need guardians, Guardian Yorns almost went extinct, but some survived. While Valko is connected to the mainland by ice, the larger creatures can't cross, meaning its larger fauna are unique to Valko. The Snow King was dethroned in Valko by an unlikely creature, a Guardian Yorn. Now known as the Striped Devil, they have become large hyper carnivores. Their beautiful stripes letting them blend into the snow and brush. These devils have saber teeth and a wide gait, allowing them to bite at the necks of titans. They are larger, being 12 feet long and half a ton. They have also evolved great vision and smell to find prey. They use their horns with mating, but also to block the tusks of titans that attack them. The smaller spotted devil is a cousin of the previous creature. They have evolved a large nose to smell carrion from miles away, allowing them to no longer need cubonzi for scavenging. They are more thin and cursorial to evade their demonic cousins. They are about 6 feet long and 190 pounds. Since no titans can walk on ice caps, the titans of Valko were stranded. This was after the evolution of the beak so the Valkovian Titan looks very similar. They have an additional pair of horns that allows them to fight against devils, but they are smaller, only 12 feet long and 1,700 pounds. Now we travel to the opposite side of the planet, to the south pole that swallowed Scalana, most of Gale, where life forms seem so alien. Here, a small scavengerous Gulbeak walking across the ice for carrion, but then he hears something rumble. A colossal creature breaks the ice and grabs the gold beak. Such are the perils of the south. The gold beak is in the clade of squilla vertebrates. Descending from the snow strip, this clade has convergently evolved with vertebrates, turning their exoskeleton into an endoskeleton and their mandibles into a beak and also becoming endothermic. All of these allowed them to survive the glycification of Solana and spread all across the South Pole. They not only survived, but thrived. These gold beaks are about six feet long and a hundred pounds, very light since their bones are made out of chitin, which is lighter than bone. Another school of vertebrates is the shop, a large nine foot 500 pound robust herbivore. They use their beaks to dig for roots and they have thick eyelids to prevent damage from snowstorms. They have traveled all throughout the South Pole and Gale and some rarely venture into the dry lands. The apex predator in the South is another squilla vertebrate, the Sprinkor. It is a cursorial predator they're 7 feet long and 200 pounds. They have a serrated beak for ripping flesh, and they can run up to 50 miles an hour to attack any chomp in their way. Their six legs allowing for these high speeds. The Great Icebreaker, or Snow Colossus, is an ambush predator that swims underneath the ice caps looking for prey. Then, using their large horn and powerful tail, to swim up and break through the ice and chase its prey. These clumsy aquatic creatures can surprisingly walk on land at about 7 miles an hour. They are 12 feet long and 2 tons. A personal favorite of mine is the isolated but very large island of Fablu, containing a host of different clades to that of the mainland. The creatures on this island have evolved even more since the last episode. 
becoming better at their niches. The rabbit-like parmoon has become the deer-like parskit. They have longer limbs and a larger snout. They get their name from their skittish nature and their parmoose ancestry. They are 5 feet long and 90 pounds of pure speed, being able to reach speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. Also called Ents, the green necks are a lineage of tree parmoose that got larger, 9 feet long and 600 pounds. They are more camouflaged, since they eat many leaves, they are able to produce green fur on their neck, hence the name green neck. When feeding, they are almost identical to a tree. This fur is even matted to appear as leaves, making them invisible. The main herbivore of Fablu is the Vambrace. These massive creatures are 11 feet long and weigh a ton and a half. They are very robust and very violent. They use the spikes on the back of their foot as a weapon to fight other Vambraces. These fights are bloody and many individuals are very scarred, giving them the nickname Scar Beasts. The fur on the shoulders are very thick and matted, giving the shoulders protection from the spikes, as during fights, it is often hit. The sea snatchers that were on Fedlu got larger and began running on their thumbs, those thumbs eventually evolving into hooves. These creatures were now carsorial predators. These running volaruses have evolved to hunt small parskets. The medium-sized, 5-foot-long volaris is only 80 pounds, allowing them to fly, as the wings are still present with a wingspan of 7.5 feet. The hunting method of the running volaris is a mix of both flying and running, as they fly in the air and search for prey, dive-bomb their prey, and if prey runs, the volaris will run them down, as they can go up to 40 miles an hour, just as fast as a parskid. During the Permian, the top predators were Gorgonopsids, saber-toothed pseudo-mammals. One species of leaf tail has experienced neoteny, appearing more like its juvenile form, and appearing more like the Gorgonopsids of old. They are now 6 feet long and 180 pounds. These saber tigers have strong saber teeth that they use to take down their preferred green neck prey. Their stripes make them deadly ambush predators. Another leaf tail lineage has evolved to be more robust and have sharper claws with shorter but stronger jaws. These leaf lions sometimes mob prey, attacking packs of vambraces and groups, but still only taking on one individual. They are still lanky and employ the tactic of jumping on the backs of the vambrace to avoid their feet spikes. They are very long, at 20 feet, but only weigh 600 pounds. They are undoubtedly the apex predator of the blue. The skull puppy is a scrap puppy descendant that has evolved with the leaf lion, looking more like it. Their fur on their skull has become a lighter color, giving them their name skull puppy. They are three and a half feet long and only 50 pounds. They still do the murder replacement of the leaf lion's child and then are fed scraps by their mother. A separate scrap puppy lineage is the tree puppy. These puppies are larger at 4 feet long and 70 pounds. They have become the scavengers of the blue, searching for carrion and stashing it in a tree like a leopard. They climb these trees with their larger claws and use their tail for balance. We now travel to the warm ocean that holds much life in the Ice Age. During this Ice Age, a new clade has gotten its hold on the ocean, the Shumares. These mice sharks have convergently evolved with mosasaurs and whales, becoming even more hydrodynamic than their torpedo ancestors. Their ears have turned into two dorsal fins, that they use for greater speeds. Their noses can close to prevent water from entering them. The giant Shumare has evolved to hunt the great colossuses of the ocean, such as the blind colossus and juvenile living islands. 
They hunt in family groups of two adults and one to three pups, usually the mating pair's children. They have extremely strong jaws and are able to pierce the hardest chitin and break the strongest bones. They are massive, 20 feet long and weighing three tons. Another Shumare is a spotted Shumare. They have taken the Shrishkavore niche, eating the schooling Shrish. They have evolved to be slender and have a long and narrow snout optimal for catching fish. They grow up to 15 feet long but are only one ton. Their name comes from their spotted skin that allows them to easily camouflage in the shallower parts of the ocean where many shrish go to lay their eggs. The final species of Shumare is the Bale Tail. This creature has evolved offensive mimicry, their tail appearing like a shrish as they mimic its swimming with their tail. Then a sea nomad will swoop down to eat the bait and the Bale Tail snaps around and eats the sea nomad. The bale tail is the smallest Shumare, clocking in at 8 feet long and only 350 pounds. They are light blue to blend in perfectly with the ocean. The Living Island is a 30 foot long, 7 ton colossus. These filter feeders are so slow that much algae grows on their back. This algae creates a micro ecosystem around the Living Islands. One species in the Living Island ecosystem is the Island Chomper. This creature is a parasite that feeds off the flesh of the Living Islands just like its ancestors. They are small, only 2 feet long, and 10 pounds. They have become very green to blend in with the algae on the Living Island's back and avoid cleaners. The Red Cleaners, a cousin of the Island Chomper, are vibrant red creatures about 4 feet long and 40 pounds. They eat the island chompers off the living islands. They are red to alert the islands that they are cleaners, not parasites. This symbiotic relationship gives them protection from other predators. A species of shrish has evolved to feed off the algae on the living islands. They are semi-aquatic as they love to crawl up on the island's back. Their face looks like a slitted helmet, giving them the name Nitrish. They are 3 feet long and 15 pounds. The sea nomads still have the niche of the sea snatchers, but they are larger, 4 feet long with a 6 foot wingspan and 50 pounds. They rest on the coasts as well as on the living island ecosystem. Thank you guys so much for 300 subscribers. If you haven't, please subscribe so I can beat the afforded and subs. But nonetheless, have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time.